Hey, this is Walter Jones. This is Austin St. John. And you're listening to Ranger Danger. Go, go, Ranger Danger. Welcome once again to Mighty Morphin Ranger Danger, the podcast where we watch, what is it? Power, Power Rangers? Power Rangers, that's it. And then we, what, what comes after that? We talk about it. Right, that's it. I remember now, it's all coming back to me. Sure. We watch that show that you're talking about and do that thing that you just said. Yes, we do. Uh, we have a website that is all about that thing that you just said. Yep. It's www.rangedangerpodcast.com. That's the one. If you want to send us emails that talk to us about that thing that we do and we can talk about you talking about that thing that we do, you can send us an email at rangedangerpodcast at gmail.com. Yep. If you want to tweet at us about things or other things or things that are related to the things that are things... That's at Ranger Decast. I really hope this is an amnesia themed episode so this turns out to be thematic and not just you being fucked up in the head. Uh, there's also some other things that we're on Facebook and YouTube and Stitcher and Google Plus and iTunes. Yep. You can subscribe us and like us and stroke us and do whatever you need to do. You can't stroke us. You can. Maybe not on those. <laughs> I just mean... I'd like to say that in general you can't stroke me at all. Well, you shouldn't, you know, and I will probably report you to the police if you do, but it's not impossible, is what I'm saying. So today we're watching episode number 66 of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. That's the sixth, fifth episode of season two. It's the sixth. Sixth, entitled Bloom of Doom. Yep. I love it because it rhymes. Yep. I'm already on board with, the epi- of, with this episode. Uh, Already on board with this episode. It's going to be great. Okay. It's going to be great, Michael. <laughs> All right? Look, last week was bad, but it wasn't that bad. It was pretty bad. Uh, so before we get to Bloom of Doom, a couple of things to talk about. Uh, yeah. The first is a short yeah. film called Steps Towards the Sun, A Vice for Killing. Uh, is this Power Rangers related or are we just watching some YouTube stuff? No, it is Power Rangers related. Uh, okay. It was shot... During the production of some episodes of Power Rangers. Right. Uh, so it's like 20 years old. Yep. They shot an hour of footage. The short film is 60 seconds long. Right. Uh, it has Austin St. John and Walter Jones in it. Yep. As well as Paul Schreier, who played Bulk. Yep. It is very strange, uh, but we're going to watch it. Okay. And then we're going to talk about it a bit. All right. Back in a second. So that was that. Uh, I'm, t- I'm speechless. Yeah, that's probably the right reaction. Yeah, that's bizarre. Yeah. Like, it's almost like they were just cutting a quick trailer for whatever they filmed. Yes. Except it has the loosest definition of a narrative involved. Yep. It's probably the shortest short film ever. I don't know about that. I'm sure there's some art films that uh, are just Sure, like but it's... Disease and war. And then that's it. <laughs> Which is basically what this was, uh, without the disease. It's like cowboys versus samurai. Yeah, except, is it really versus? They just stand and look at each other for a bit in a western-themed sort of backdrop. Then the cowboys shoot at the samurai. Some of, like, there's some Asian-looking people and bulk. So it's a bit <laughs> jarring. <laughs> Uh, mm. and, and then I guess the samurais briefly fight back. And kill them all. Kill them all and that that's it. So they shot an hour of footage for this? Apparently. What were they hoping to achieve? I don't know. Alright. All the information I've provided you is all the information that I have. That's a beautiful mystery. If only one of us had spoken to Austin St. John recently and could ask him what the fuck that was about. Look, if I'd known about it beforehand, I would have. Right. But Well, we're going to have to find them again. Yep, yeah, clearly. Next time we interview them, hey guys, steps towards the sun, advice for killing. What, what the, the fuck? fuck? <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right. Uh, there'll be a link to that in the show notes if for whatever reason you want to torment yourselves with that. Uh, so the other thing, Matt, are you familiar with the blog texts from last night? No. So Text From Last Night is one of those kind of Tumblr, like, picture blogs that has popped up in the last four or five years. And all it is is 
people share like their text messages from last night when they were like drunkenly sending texts to their friends who were like all out and lost and yeah or like their conversation about what happened last night that sort of stuff yeah so what i have to share with you is text from the morphing grid which is <laughs> text from last night overlaid on top of screenshots from power rangers i'm really ready for this um so look so are we gonna pause it and then i'll do yeah it later? I, I i don't think yeah i think we'll pause it so you can have a look and then yeah. we can talk about it okay yeah, some of those are pretty great. Yeah, I mean, it's a bit hit and miss, it is, as yeah. many of these blogs are. Lots of them are about Tommy having sex with everybody. Yeah. Uh, which often apparently, Jason. Apparently, often Jason. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's some pretty good ones, and I think we'll post links to some of our favourite Mighty Morphin ones in the show notes, uh, along with a link to just the general blog. Yeah, that Billy one was definitely my favourite. <laughs> it really but was. You'll see it on there. Yeah. Um, so there you go. That's just a nice bit of enjoyment for everybody. Yeah. All right. Uh, Bloomer Doom. Hang on. We got to talk about a third video that we watched recently. Do we? Yeah. I don't know what third video we watched. The super mega one. Oh. (laughs) So Michael showed me a few days ago. That's right. A video that was just a cut of every time the Rangers say super mega in super mega force. Yep. 22 Um, times in the first episode. Yeah. It's intense. None at all in the seventh. Oddly. Yeah. Uh, it, it's one of those things that starts off funny, then becomes unfunny, and then gets really funny, and that pattern... Does that about six times. Yeah. It's weird. It's great. I think especially because of the way they structured Super Mega Force, where that's not their default powers, and yeah. they, like, morph again every week. Yeah. There's more of those than you'd necessarily expect. Yeah. And in different sort of situations as yeah. well. Uh, and it's not just when they morph, it's when they do various yeah, things. all of their things are called Super Mega Cannon, Super Mega Megazord. Super Mega Walk to the Shops and Get Some Milk. <laughs> it stops sounding like words very quickly. Very quickly. Um, it's pretty great. Yeah. So there'll be a link to that in the show notes as well. That's right. All right. Now Bloom of Doom? Now Bloom of Doom. Let's do it. I assume it's like a flower monster. It better be. Yeah. Or it could be a mushroom cloud. That would be a, that should be bleak. That'd be a dark episode. I don't think it's going to be a mushroom cloud. No, I think unless it's a cloud shaped like a mushroom, we could get I mean, that. that is what a mushroom cloud. No, is. no, but like a cloud in oh, the like sky. A, okay, right. Yeah. Or, or it could be a mushroom made of clouds. Do you think it could be about bloom, like the lensing artifact you get when you shoot the sun? Yeah, this is the JJ Abrams episode. Yeah, of yeah. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Yeah, lens flare of doom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's probably not going to be that. It's probably not going to be that. Probably going to be a flower. All right. I think that, yeah, I think that's a fair call. But look, that's fine. I like flowers more than I like the Gorn from Star Trek, so... (laughs) I don't think that's its name. It is, though. I'm pretty sure they just reused that last week. It was a reuse of that old costume they had lying around. In Japan. (laughs) In Japan. (laughs) Okay, let's go watch Bloom of Doom. Uh, You can too, if you want to risk this one. And we'll be back in a sec. Bloom of Doom! (laughs) Bloom of Doom. I'm trying to get excited. Bloom of Doom. Would Bloom you? Of... It was clearly better than last week's. It is true that the Angel Grove plot was connected to the monster plot. Here's the which... problem, right? I've figured out the problem. Matt is holding the episodes of this show that we watch against the good episodes of this show that he remembers in his head, which makes them look terrible. I haven't seen many good episodes from recently. I think what's killing it for me now is I'm holding episodes against what we wrote. Sure. You know? And I always just assumed that writing an episode would be harder than we thought it would be. And we were being too harsh on the writers of the show. It turns out the opposite is is true. It's not that hard. They're being terrible people. I will say, given that I'm in the process of cutting it together, we ran a little long. Okay. Okay. We we went a little over twenty two minutes. Is it? I was shrugging to, for, for those <laughs> yeah. at home. Like that's not comparable to what we're being assaulted just, with. You just are being unnecessarily mean to what was a perfectly solid episode. Oh no! Yes. No. Yes. All right. Well, let's just talk about it. Okay. So we start off with some super intense piano sad music. Yep. Because the. There's a... It's a club sign-up day. Yes. Yep. Uh, Zach has a hip-hop keto club. I would join that club. 
Trini has a volleyball club. Wouldn't join that club. Billy has a science club. I would join that club. Uh, Kimberly has a flower club. I would not that join that no club. no one wants to be in. They do, they just can't find it. But we get, Well, we'll get to that spoiler at warning. the end of the episode. There's also a chess club, uh, which, impressively, Billy's not in charge of. Yeah, I mean, it. you can only have one club by the looks of it. Yeah. So, you know. He couldn't do both. No. Uh, and Bulk and Skull have an Unsolved Mysteries club. Yep. In which they dress up like Crocodile Dundee. Uh, yeah. And wade around in the swamp trying to figure out who the Power Rangers are. Is, Somehow. Is the gist of that. Yeah. While also being tangled up in microphone cables. So, that, that that's a thing that happens, I guess. That's what happens uh, in all of my clubs. <laughs> <laughs> Except it's not microphone cable. Uh, so, what is it? I don't, I don't even know what you're insinuating. That <laughs> Back to the episode. No one is coming to Kimberly's table. No. And it's hinted that the problem is that no one can find it because Principal Kaplan walks in and he's like, this is such a mess. Uh, unfortunately, he's not referring to the episode. Uh, what a confusing mess, he says. <laughs> uh, what he means is that Apparently there's tables in a few different locations and no one can figure out. I have questions. Yeah. What is the school's relationship to the youth centre where this is all happening? We've asked this a lot of times. Because, like, they use it like it's just the school hall. Yeah. But it is presumably an independent business. Well, we know it's independent business because Ernie has been losing money. That's true. It's possible that it's, like, the cafeteria or, like, an Australian canteen, right? Or it's a business where potentially it's been privatised. By a conservative government. Um, and so they sold the school canteen to Ernie. And he's transformed the canteen and the whole area into a for-profit industry. Basically. It's kind of bleak. Well, it, it, but that's clearly what's going on. I mean... Like, he charges money for the classes. He charges money for the beverages, except for the ranges. It's a fascinating kind of... And it's not like when he's looking at the books, he's like, Oh, the canteen's losing money. This is going to look bad on our government reports. He's like, oh, can the hand team's losing money? I'm going to go out of business. So it's government not... Government reports? Yeah. Do you... Is that your understanding of how government works? Look, it's just, no, I what, know. Once a year, they just present government reports. I know for about... a fact that 80% of government work is reports. So... Okay, sure. Um, so look, Lord Zed decides to capitalise on this. Yeah. I think what this episode revealed to me... Lord Zed wings things yeah. just as much as Rita did. Yeah. He's just scarier. Yeah. He's not in any way better at the job. Oh, or God, no. more efficient or more effective. He's just, like, spookier to look at. Yeah. It is depressing, though, because we see Squat and Babu in this episode. Yep. And I think it's Squat gets one line that Goldark would have had. And it just makes me go, oh, I miss the evil space aliens. A little bit. Like, I miss that team. Like, that office dynamic. Whereas at the moment, it's just Lord Zed and Goldar to have someone bounce. No, yeah, fucking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm kind of bummed about that. But we'll get more of that later. Yep. So, uh, Lord Zed's going to use a jealousy potion on a cactus flower. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Kimberly p- pricks her finger on it. Yeah. She's going to turn against Trini. Yep. I mean, that is kind of the same plan as last week, yes. basically. Uh, but that's okay. Interestingly, he doesn't just zap the cactus. No, which, Matt. Which is how he's done everything previously. No. He has to... Jealousy potions can't be transmitted via lightning. Don't be stupid. He had to go to Bunnings and buy a cactus. Yep. Um, that was a flower, flower, awkward situation presumably. because they're like, you should be wearing a helmet over that exposed and brain. Skin. <laughs> and yes, skin. You should be wearing skin. <laughs> no skin, no service, I think is flower powers <laughs> policy. <laughs> and I think is quite a reasonable one. Uh, so he gives it to a putty. Yeah. The putty teleports down. Yeah. Becomes the most conspicuous man in a trench coat <laughs> you have ever seen. But also I've seen people like that before. He's like a dude with longer hair, black sunglasses and a black trench trench coat over, like, a black shirt and black pants. If you've ever been to a comic book store... He also looks like he's about six feet tall. Yeah. 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 So if you've ever been to a comic yeah. book store, a- about a quarter of the people there look like that. Yeah. Now, uh, to be fair, about two quarters of them, lovely people that look like regular people. I would also like to say, though, this isn't happening at a comic book store. This is happening at the youth centre, yeah. where he looks like a pedophile. <laughs> yeah, he does. 
<laughs> yeah, fair cop. Um, so he just he walks in. It's all about context. Yeah, you know. Uh, Kimberly's over chatting to Ernie. He yep. walks in, swaps the flowers, walks out. Yeah, it's the least subtle thing you've ever seen. Yeah, and then there's just a few minutes of general confusion with Kimberly being jealous, which yep. basically involves people shouting "Lighten up, okay." At each other. Like, that's a thing that you say when someone is upset. Well, she does need to lighten up a bit. I don't know if lightening up is her problem. Maybe be nicer. Do you have any idea what the American, like, clubs system is like? Because this show gives kind of the impression that you could be in one club. Yeah. And that's all that there is. I have no idea. Like, Trini couldn't just also be in Kimberly's club. We didn't. At least in my high schools, really have clubs yeah, like that. We didn't like, either, really. It, it's a bit different. We eat the university and they have lots of clubs, but sure. you can be as many clubs as you want. Yeah, like... yeah, I don't know. Although it could just be that Kimberly's under the impression that they're going to do the volleyball thing and they won't have time to do another club. That's fair. Um, especially because they're on a very tight schedule because it's, you sign up to a club in the first meetings in the 15 minutes. Yep. So yep. they hit the ground running with these yeah. clubs. And you know, like how often do they meet? Once a week? How often are those meetings going to be interrupted by a giant monster? Once a week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just something more to deal with. Uh, so Ernie proves that he is the fucking best. Yeah. Uh, Tommy goes over, Tommy and Jason are chatting to Ernie. Yeah. And they're like, you know what's up with her? And he's like, I don't fucking know. I just give people milkshakes. I'm not a psychologist. But here, Tommy, have some flowers. That'll She's a girl. Flowers will cheer her up. <laughs> Tommy takes the flowers over to her. Jason tags along. Bit of a third wheel. Yeah. But <laughs> Don't need to be there, Jason. Like, like, Tommy, here's some flowers. Go give them to your semi-girlfriend. Yeah. That'll cheer her up. Jason, hey, tag along. Yeah. Just, you know, be there. You'll be wanted in that scenario. Yeah. yeah. Um, Kim doesn't like the flowers. She's too busy being jealous. Yeah. Again, jealous, very nebulous at this point. Jealous kind of means kind of bratty, yelling at everyone. Yep. Being sarcastic when morphing. (laughs) I do genuinely think that this isn't a terrible plan. For the reason that Kimberly could just be jealous. Yeah. Like, there's nothing stopping Kimberly from getting jealous. They're normal teenagers. Yeah. It's not like last week where they were seeing putties everywhere. Clearly something is up. Yeah. Like... No, I understand. No no one goes, Kimberly's jealous. Lord Zed must have cast a spell. Like... Uh, Again, my problem here is... It comes from the fact that the plot isn't jealousy-based. Not really. Jealousy is just a word used for acting out of character. Yep. In inconsistent ways. Yep. Uh, Also in the scene at the bar... We get Bulk and Skull explaining once again that they're searching for the Power Rangers. Tommy looks very concerned about this. Yep. Which is very strange, considering that he knows Bulk and Skull. I mean, occasionally they're successful. Very occasionally. Oh, maybe. Anyway. Once or twice. Uh, so, what happens next? Do we get the flower monster being created? Yep. So, the creation of the Bloom of Doom. It yep. has uh, fiery, poisonous pollen. Yeah. So this is during uh, Kimberly sitting in a garden bed and being like, oh, why am I doing this? Gardening is so boring because she's jealous. Yep. <laughs> you know how jealousy works. It makes things boring. I mean, Matt, <laughs> it's like you've never been jealous of anyone before. Yeah. Now, the Rangers are in different locations and they get summoned to morph, basically. Yep. So, God, also, oh, man, this show uses the word morphing yep. to mean teleporting. Yes. Zordon says multiple times, I need you to morph over there. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> well, I, if it was like, the show is morph your location. teleporting before. Yeah. Like, it and knows that I, that's I a think word. I this is warping at some point, which sounds a bit like morphing, so maybe that's what it was. Anyway. Anyway. Um, so, there's, a, there's this weird scene, which, uh, like, it, 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 I was a little impressed <laughs> with um, Kimberly's Amy Jo Johnson. Thank you. Acting. I really liked this scene. But it, like, it, what is this? Like, it's not jealousy. Okay, look, Matt, I think you need to let it go. Okay? <laughs> okay. 
jealousy is just the word that we are using to describe being a bit weird. And once you move <laughs> past it, that... It hit, it hit peak for me when someone said, oh, she's green with jealousy. And it's like, no, envy. <laughs> That's the say, green with envy. Everyone knows that. It's not jealousy. I would like to say you guys know that because that was a joke that you used for five episode That's titles right. in a row. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um... So, yeah, so Zordon talks to Kimberly. Yeah. And, you know, he says, like, I've got a special weapon that you need to wrap up the Bloom of Doom with this. It's a ribbon. ribbon. Spoiler one. It's a ribbon on a stick. (laughs) (laughs) But, like, Kimberly, you know. I wash myself with a ribbon on a stick. Kimberly, like, rolls her eyes when she gets it. Yeah. Which is a fair response. She's like, well, what am I meant to do with this shit? And Zordon's like, just wrap them up, okay? For fuck's sake. Just do what you're told. And then. Because because she's on her own, she delivers its morphin time in the most sarcastic way possible. She's also rolling her eyes the whole time she's speaking to Zordon, and then that's not on, unfair though. No, and then puts on this like fake chipper accent. Like that's so when her communicator beeps, she takes like a moment to go. All right, cheery. Yeah. Hi Zordon, what's up? Yeah. It's nice. Except it's, no, it's such a shit eating. Like, hey, I'm so happy to be talking to you, fuck <laughs> It's... She's just she's jealous, man. <laughs> <That's> Jealousy. <laughs> it's a weird scene, and I don't understand it. <laughs> uh, uh, Jealousy right. makes you sarcastic <laughs> and hate gardens. <laughs> I mean, I hate gardens most of the time already. You're so jealous, Michael. I'm jealous of gardens. They just make me so. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the show is shaking us insane. <laughs> We're jealous of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna follow the recording. We're back. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. We just had to get the laughter out of the system, and then I had to literally lie on the floor and recover. I was briefly worried that we wouldn't be able to come back, and that that would have been it. The end of the podcast. The end of the podcast. And you guys would all have been jealous. <laughs> I certainly looked into the gaping more of madness in the past few minutes. Yep. And I'm I'm happy that I was able to make it back, but surprised as well. Yeah, no, we've powered through. We yeah. we were teleported to another dimension yep. of laughter and giggles, and now we are out of the giggle dimension. We've overcome our jealousy. Yep. We're back in the podcast dimension. Yep. Oh, boy. Okay. Uh, that'll become a bit more relevant in a moment when we start talking about alternate dimensions. Yeah, so... Uh, Kimberly wraps the thing around the blue. Oh, the Bloom of Doom has incendiary pollen. poison pollen. Yeah. Which makes you dance. The Power Rangers suits yep. really need to be, like, airtight. Yeah. It's happened a couple of times that they've gotten, like, infected or bitten or shit. Yeah. I don't understand... What the suits do, if not protect them. Yeah. 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 So they're fighting the pollen monster. We should probably mention that. It's yeah. just... It looks like a giant flower. It looks kind of like a vagina. It like does. a terrifying vagina. Yeah. Like, not enough like it. Like, if you see a vagina that looks like this, tell them to go to a doctor immediately. If it starts shooting incendiary pollen, <laughs> it's probably a Lord Zed trap. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're not going to fall for it again. We're not jealous of vaginas. We're going to keep moving. <laughs> Stop using that word like that. <laughs> What, vaginas? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Kimberly, so the four boy rangers are all, they've all got ants in their pants. Yeah, because of all, the incendiary pollen, yep. so they're doing their, their jittery so, thing. Yep, so uh, Kimberly... Including the green ranger who flips onto his back and then flips back up because he yep. has so much pain. Yep. You uh, know when you're in so much pain you start flipping? Yep. It happens, yep. it's a real thing. Yeah, it is. Flip madness, they call it. <laughs> Uh, So, Kimberly manages to wrap the ribbon around the Bloom of Doom, which has an unspecified effect. Yeah. No, it's not unspecified. It shoots lightning out of it. Oh, yeah, it does too. Yeah. It's pretty Um, cool. Yeah. It it is just a pink ribbon. Yeah. Um, Like, there's not even an attempt to disguise... No, it doesn't look scientific. Someone went to, like, the gymnastic shop and bought a pink ribbon on a stick. Yeah. Anyway, so Trini's like, right, I'll take care of it. And she jumps... And somehow cuts the ribbon. Yeah. But she cuts the ribbon so far away from the Bloom of Doom that she had to be, like, facing the wrong way when she attacked. Basically, yeah. 
it's strange for Trini, who never misses, yep. to miss that badly. Yep. You know, she was distracted, because Kimberly's jealous. <laughs> this uh, just makes Kimberly even more jealous. Yep. Of... She meaning angry. Yeah. Um... In this case. So then the Bloom of Doom... Kimberly, like, jumps at the Bloom of Doom. Yeah. And the Bloom of Doom does, like... And tells... Oh, sorry, we skipped a... I just want to mention. Sure. What, but just before they fight the Bloom of Doom, the, the Bloom of Doom releases some parties, basically, in this oh, party yeah. fight. And it's American footage that they've cut into the Japanese footage. Yeah. Which I found really interesting that they do that. Like, okay, let's pad out the fight. But I guess they would have had to have parties included in the Japanese fight. Because you see the Bloom of Doom with the putties. Yeah, I guess. So it's strange to me that the Japanese are like, here's some putties, you guys take care of that. And yeah. then cut back. Yeah, just yeah, interesting. I know. Sure. Okay. So, um, yeah, uh, the Bloom of Doom teleports Kimberly to another dimension. Yep. Which looks like every other, other dimension we've ever seen, except it has cactuses in it. Yep. Uh, it yeah. In it's a little bit, we'll have a cut to Lord Zed where he says... Uh, look where your jealousy has brought you. Yeah. Which is interesting, because I have no idea where her jealousy has brought her. Like, at this point, we have no idea what the fuck this thing is. I mean, it's definitely not good. No. I think if you woke up tomorrow, and there was just blackness as far as the eye could see, smoke covering the ground, and cactuses everywhere, <laughs> I don't think you'd go, right, okay, where's the bathroom? I think there'd be some panicking going on. Yeah, it's it was just... It's so strange how quickly... The show needs you to assume that alternate dimensions with cactuses in them are a, th- a thing. You know, it, it's not strange at this point. It's not like the show hasn't had alternate dimensions in it I before. I know, it's just, it's just weird, Michael. Sure. There's cactuses in them. <laughs> you know, it's, a, it's the cactus. Di- Where do you think cactuses come from? They're clearly not of Earth. <laughs> That's true. That is true. So, I, like, what happens here? Kimberly gets so jealous <laughs> that she falls into an alternate dimension. No, I think the bl- the blue. There's a thing where it like kaleidoscopes its eyes. Yeah, and then we kaleidoscope the shot of Kimberly. Yeah, I think basically it just like gets Kimberly, and then they t- teleports her to the other dimension. Okay, I think the jealousy just like stopped them all from working together and taking it out. Right. But this alternate dimension isn't inside the Bloom of Doom. It's just an alternate dimension. I think so, because the Bloom of Doom is inside the alternate dimension. Right. Presumably the Bloom of Doom redecorated the alternate dimension a bit and made it themed to its likeness, though. Or it's the Bloom of Doom mention. <sighs> that's horrible. All right, okay. That's fine. Whatever, man. Maybe that's where the Bloom of Doom came from. Who knows? I just want to remind this you show that you said this doesn't. was a solid episode. It is a solid episode. I stand by that. It's all about jealousy. It's so inconsistent. It's like... You, can you just, know, cactuses, the international flower of jealousy. There's just it like, all ties together. There's just like this scope of inconsistency that starts with inconsistently using the word jealousy <laughs> and goes right up to inconsistently using universes and everything in between those two things. I'm just saying, Matt, do you remember last week's episode? I... I'm not convinced this is any better. Matt, do you remember the Salaguana? Yeah. Anyway, agree to disagree. Putty on the brain, Matt. Green with jealousy, <laughs> Michael. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. This has been a... I'm oh, sorry. Another thing came back to me. Zordon did say when the... Agu- uh, when he realises that Trini... Not Trini. Kimberly has been jealous theorised. Yeah. He says, oh, it's as I feared this happened. It's not funny anymore. <laughs> it is funny. It's just It's silly. still funny. Oh, I, what, how did you feel this happening? You know, maybe one day... So he, he's had 10,000 years <laughs> to prepare for Rita to come back. He got afraid of a lot of stuff. <laughs> you know how, like, during the day stuff happens and you'd be like, well, whatever. And then you get home at night and you're like, well, I could have died there. Yeah. He's had that for 10,000 years. He sees a cactus, he's like, wow, what that if could some, have made me really jealous. What if one of the rangers turns, it's turned jealous? <laughs> I know Lord Zed has a jealousy spell that does inconsistent but, things but in the name of jealousy. Because he has to make a potion. Well, the spell makes the potion, Matt. Don't be stupid. <laughs> oh, it hurts me. <laughs> Okay, look, basically, they do some science, and Billy says that if Trini throws her daggers at a 90-degree trajectory, yeah. which I will add is a meaningless sentence, something-something, <laughs> um, dimension-something, so I guess she just throws them at the air? Yeah, which means that every time that Trini throws her daggers and they go straight, a universe gets destroyed. 
That's what that means. I mean, I don't, I don't actually think that's what that means. I think well, every because there's no special circumstances. It's not like throw it at this thing or throw it at this time. She does throw it like where we last saw the bloom of doom. Yeah. Look, I just think any time that Trini throws her daggers down, we need to be concerned that some universe out there is dying. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Every time Trini throws her daggers, we're normally concerned about the fact that she kind of just throws them under arm and, like, they just bounce off shit. So I feel like at least now they've got stakes attached to them. <laughs> That's you true. Know? Like, normally, the they are the least effective they're, weapons. They're incredibly high stakes for no benefit. It's like, throw your daggers, a universe might die, and we know it won't be effective. There's a couple of bits in this episode coming up where Kimberly shoots her bow at the Bloom of Doom. Yeah. And it is so incredibly obvious that someone is standing just off stage, underarm throwing some rubber arrows at the monster. (laughs) The thing is, bows aren't that hard to make. They could have just made a bow. I do think, Matt, and I think you will agree with me, shooting arrows at a stunt performer is unreasonable. But if they're made of plastic... And you can shoot plastic arrows from a real bow. Nothing's going to happen. So, anyway. They would still just bounce off. Yeah. <sighs> they summon the power blaster, they kill the Bloom of Doom. Yep. What more do you want? Yeah, no Megazord this week. No. No. Uh, there was a Megazord fight shot for yep. the Bloom of Doom, but uh, in the Zayu 2 footage. But as I understand it, there was it was too tied to the original Megazord for them to make that work. Right. So they just destroyed it with the Power Blaster instead. It does, does give you that weird moment where you cut to the moon and you're like, oh, this is where Lord Zed makes it grow. Except this week he just decides not to. Yep. He cuts his losses. He's like, probably not going to work out for me. Fuck it. No. I'm then he, jealous now. Then he blames Golda. Cause... Golda's jealous. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. I'm not going to stop it. I'm going to be doing this like 12 weeks from now. And you're going to be like, I don't understand what's going on. Why do you keep saying I'm jealous? <sighs> All right. So look, back at the school, Principal Kaplan put the wrong location in the school paper for the sign-ups. Yeah. Kind of a dick about it. Somehow everybody else showed up for like the volleyball club. Yeah. It was only the people in the flower club who got confused. Yeah. Although, again, it's strange because... They talk about, like, these people had already signed up, but Kimberly was waiting on people to sign up. They were members of the Flower Club, except they weren't. Yeah. It's It's because they were jealous, I guess. (laughs) Now you're doing it. No. Uh, Um, yeah, look, now Kimberly's got all sorts of girls who we'll never see again in the Flower Club. Yep. Not even a token boy. Trini and Kimberly are best friends again, which I guess they're best friends. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then Buck and Skull walk in. Oh, yeah. Uh, they managed to record the Power Rangers speaking. Which we somehow. didn't see. No. Um, no. But, but that happened. And they're like, look, we're going to play the voices and you'll be able to figure out who it is. Which to me implies that they've already listened to it. But we know that's not the case because it's revealed that they've actually the thro- tape was busted, they've or... thrown the tape into a swamp because it's <laughs> covered in green goop. <laughs> and it comes out with there not being like the canister that comes with it or a... a cassette. Yep. Just a pile of tape. Yep. So it was a pretty bad swamp yep. that they threw it into. Uh, so that plan is ruined. It's not a bad plan. No. <laughs> like, the, the swamp part, admittedly, could use some work. <laughs> but record what the Power Rangers sound like. Yeah. Compare that to everyone. Of course, the problem with that plan is that would involve them hearing the Power Rangers talking. And if they can tell from listening to that why can't they just tell from listening? Why does it need to be recorded? Why is there that extra step? That's, I guess, so you can compare, like, later. I suppose. Look, I'm going to spoil it for you guys. The power, the Balkan Skull find out who the Power Rangers are five years from now. Yeah. Okay. And it's not these Power Rangers, are they? No, and it's not the next group of Power Rangers. <laughs> no. So, they're not going to have much luck, so we'll be stuck with this for a while. It's all right. In between, they become police officers. Uh, and monkeys. They get turned into monkeys. Um, something else, too. Well, later on, they, they literally go into space on the space colony. They do go into space. Which is an impressive career trajectory yep. for these two. <laughs> uh, with a crazy professor? Yeah, I professor so. Phenomenus? I think that's his name. Maybe. Who knows? I'd like to say this show stops being weird, guys, but that is just untrue. No. And I guess that's the benefit. The one thing I'm willing to concede about this episode is that 
It wasn't boring. No. It was insane. And that's okay. It was poorly executed, but sometimes that works in our favour because we get to laugh about how poorly executed it is. And really, that's what this podcast is, isn't it? If we're being honest. Yep. I'd love it to be about our expression of love for something we genuinely enjoy, but... It will be that. Yeah. Like, we're just not there yet. Yeah. When it's good, it's okay. <laughs> you pull out of that one. <laughs> well... <laughs> when it's good, it's good. It's yeah. just that it's not good for a long time yet. Yeah. We've got a lot of shit to get through. So apparently we have a Judd Lean episode coming out not too long. Yep. So hopefully that'll be all right. And it uh, happened to be one that I'm pretty sure I watched quite a bit when I was a kid, so that'll be interesting for me to revisit. It's exciting. Yeah. All right. So uh, Bloom of Doom on the Monster Ranker, or the Creature Feature. Uh, zero. Below Wheel of Misfortune. No, not really. Below Salaguana. I don't think so. Okay. It did have an altered dimension. Yep. Although it also got defeated by a ribbon, so you got to weigh that one up. Uh, below Frankenstein? No. Below Rhino Blaster? What was Rhino Blaster? Rhino Blaster was the one from the football episode. He looked like a football coach. Okay, no, I liked him. Okay. Uh, below Twin Man? Um, no, I think he goes below Rhino Blaster. Like, uh, like okay, before Rhino sure. Blaster. Between Rhino Blaster and Frankenstein. So, uh... That's two monsters in a row in the bottom five. Yeah. Which is not a great couple of episodes. I don't know if we talked about it, but is Rhino Blaster a rhinoplasty joke? I don't think so, but... I feel like it is. I think he had, like, a gun or a cannon or something. Right. But I think that's where the pun comes from. It's a nose surgery joke. We've seen some shit, guys. <laughs> yeah. All but- right. So, uh, we will be back next week. We're going to have a guest who will help us take the edge off my cynicism and depression. Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now yeah. that we are hoping to get my dad on the show oh, that's for fantastic. next week. Um, we'll see. Yeah. It depends on a couple of scheduling things. Yeah. But we're very excited. We might get Tim on as well to soften that a bit. <laughs> um, so, that will be The Green Dream. And that'll be next week. If it's not my dad, it'll be someone new or maybe someone old. We'll see. Definitely a guest. Your dad will be both new and old. I see what you did there. Yeah. All right. Uh, that'll be that. Don't forget, uh, rangeinagerpodcast.com slash shop. It's an unlimited time only offer. That's right. I mean, not. it's not unlimited. We will die. The heat death of the universe will occur at some point, And it will definitely not be on sale then. No. Um, Probably, like, there'll be a gap between those two things. Yes. The shop closing and the universe. I mean, I'd say so. Yeah. But... We can't know for certain, I suppose. Yeah. Definitely, you've got some time. Yeah. But, you know, get on it. We'll see you next week.